Is it running? Can you see a picture? Oh well, I mean, Deco was talking about it filling up, and I had done told him that if y'all need an extra commentator, which it obviously doesn't appear so, that I'd be around if you need me. But yeah, I mean, if I need to get out, I'll get out. You just tell me. I think he's worried about the uh, server filling up, but otherwise, yeah, I may stick around for a little bit. Throughout the year, the Kyo Rule is filled with the hosting of short sprint races, but today, it changes. The magic of a competition will thrill of the ride will start to see. The long distance with the winner soon will be determined. It will be a challenge. The racing on the oval is close and tight and in danger at any moment. No matter where you qualify, the three abreast start poses a spectacle and danger like no other. 
To make it to the finish, you must survive the start. Unlike any other race, the Kyoto 500 is a spectacle. The best to put their name in the head to qualify and run. must have a partner to draft with. To be alone means to be at a disadvantage. The length of the run brings into play the world of pit strategy. Kyoto's pit lane is long, wide, but it's not without trouble. Getting in and out of pit lane is critical. The stake here will cause the your race. So then, after 18 practice race sessions, 12 hours of qualifying and an awful lot of laps from every single one of these drivers, the time is upon us. It is the time for the Kyoto 500 2010, the third annual. Chris Wilkinson here with Michael Passingham, um, Phil Diaz, and last year's um, race winner, Nolan Scott, alongside me here to take you through the entire race, flag to flag, and uh, Michael, last year was a very eventful race, wasn't it? It was indeed, yes. It was a three-hour, 17-minute affair. Plenty of goings-on, plenty of accidents, and it ended, ah, oh, the final lap was the most amazing final lap I can remember in my Live for Speed commentary career. Nolan Scott eventually taking the victory by just under a tenth of a second. Uh, that was a thrilling race, just from Phil Diaz, both of these guys joining us in the country box today, which will be interesting. Um, it's strange to see them sitting out, really, from this uh, quite prestigious LFS race. Yes, it is, and Nolan, you must have some really good memories, or really interesting memories, shall I say, from last year's event, do you? Well, absolutely, yeah, I mean, it was a crazy race, I think we were involved in, like, three wrecks, and... One time we had to repair damage. We never changed our tires, though. I think that was really kind of what won the race for us. So, in a moment, the drivers will start their engines and we'll take you through the grid. Obviously, it's going to be a 3x3 three three grid. Uh, always interesting. Um, just to add to the realism, I mean, it's, it's not safe um, with... LFS lag related incidents um, obviously will be amplified by having three people per row on the grid, but uh, it certainly does make the starts extremely interesting. Um, the main thing, as we always say every year, is that cautions breed cautions. So if we're able to get through the first few laps without a caution, we, uh, the chance of another caution or any caution happening decreases. Dan Sanger, last year's pole sitter, starts on pole once again this year, only last year. He was unable to take the start after an internet issue. 
Hopefully this year he'll have the luck and will be able to complete a lap, hopefully. The pole sitter has never won this race in its two previous runnings. In fact, the two previous winners have started uh, in 2008, 15th position for Brenislav Goga, who this year is starting 21st. And last year, Nolan Scott tied 16th on the grid and he went on to win the race. So it really is open to anyone. It doesn't really matter what position you've got on the grid because it's a long race and anything and everything does happen during the race. Yes, it does, and also you forgot to mention there that no pole sitter, let alone, has never won this race. No pole sitter has ever taken the green flag to this race. So, really, no, no, it's not a particularly great omen to be put on pole position for the Kyoto 500, but hopefully Dan Sanger there in the 28 car can um, change his fortunes. And let's run through the grid um, for today's race, shall we? Okay, so the drivers have started their engines with the wind speed at the moment 5 kilometers per hour. Not entirely sure of the direction of that wind at the moment, but we'll find out later. So, row one, Dan Sanger in the 28 car, Mike Sadel in the 31, and Brandon Coleman in the 707. So let me just make a quick correction to that. Dan Sanger starts on the pole on the inside of the front row. Mike Sadel is in the middle of the front row. And Orientica is on the outside of the front row starting in third place. On the second row is Vince Verstrecken on the inside with Kevin Myers in the middle. And Sebastian Hudgenson of Sonic Realms Racing on the outside. Um, Fraser starts on row three on the inside with Randy Young. Tommy Engel, pardon me, on, in the middle. And Randy Young on the outside. Yeah, apologies for my incorrect there. I was looking at the wrong list of drivers. So, on the fourth row, we have uh, Gasunas, Carlos Gasunas, starting on the inside. Leon Solfrank, starting in the middle. And Tom Tomela, starting on the outside. Yep, on row five, Jan Lavrov starts on the inside with Nathan Lamoth. In the middle, and Patrick Schultz, who we saw quite a lot of in the Kyoto 250 earlier on this year, he starts on the outside of row 5. Row 6, off to ha Oscar Hardwick on the inside, McCarran in the middle, and on the right hand side, Raymond Blauhoff. Yep, on the next row back, Travis Mirlinger starts on the inside with Sutherton in the middle, and Don Leek on the outside of that row. Uh, next row, Tadek Kagash on the inside, Sutton in the middle, and on the right, Linz Chimmy. And on the final row, we have Steve Martin on the inside, with Kick Rappel in the middle, and Gigi Wang starting from dead last. Um, on the outside of the final row, as the safety car in this lap board comes in, we go down the back straight. The wind speed today has been confirmed as being 5 kilometers per hour. Going from inside to outside on the start-finish line, which we will approaching soon, which is a breeze compared to last year, quite literally. <coughs> and the green flag flies for the 2010 Kyoto 500. Thus far, it's been a pretty clean start. Every driver's made it past the start-finish line, which is something of a rare occurrence in an oval race of this kind. And everyone has made it through time one as well. Mike Sable is in the lead at this moment in time. And yes, now he is in a break up. The lead. Yep, and a breakaway group starting to form here with the top four, Mike Sable, Oriantica, and Dan Sanger and Seb Hutchinson. Can these pull away from the rest of the pack very, very early? It's looking quite likely that really holding that four group well, but Verstrecken and Engel starting to catch back. 
Yeah, indeed, for Strecken, looked like he was going to be a bit frustrated there as the top Ford got away from it, but they just slowed down through the final corner to let him get in the inside. Now he is going to take the lead, so it's a five-car group at the front. Engel following up the rest of them in sixth position for the Tiger Express Motorsport team. Yep, into the news, and um, that is the first ever first lap that has gone completely green in the Kyoto 500. That is amazing. I'm, I'm a, <laughs> that's fantastic, really. Yep, that pulls very, very well for a decent race, to be honest, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, people have been uh, all over the forums, like Jonathan Palmer, race admin, everyone has just been pushing for this race to be s clean as possible. We've learned over the last few years that it's just sometimes things happen and uh, drivers aren't careful enough, but I think this time around we are looking at a great field of drivers. I mean, we're only on lap, uh, lap 5 of the 270, including pace laps, that is, but so far it's been incredibly clean with very little contact. Things are looking good. Yes, it has, as we come through uh, the third corner now as we're looking at the main real gaggle in this field um, the top four and five really have now made a breakaway they're all running in a very very formatted straight line but there's a lot of side by side action further back as we're watching yep and as it is every year you've got to find some drafting buddies to help you catch the rest of the field you really can't drive by yourself you just won't have the pace if you're not uh, if you're not drafting with someone else getting some help yeah very true so, uh, is that as the breakaway group has now in fact been caught up by the um, the group behind and Finch for Strecken with an absolutely fantastic lead over this group somehow even pulling away right now of this gaggle of four wide is Kevin Myers nearly running up into the side of Sebastian Hutchinson's car <laughs> in for second place and as they all yeah, start good. to catch uh, Vince Restrecken, this is really hotting up. It is, yeah, Vince Restrecken got away for a little bit, but uh, he's going to be caught inevitably. Well, only if these guys actually manage to get some drafting going, because right now they're just running side by side, not really helping each other. And this is allowing Vince to get away, but it's so early on in the race. I mean, <laughs> by the end of the race, you might not be seeing any of these guys. These guys might be at the back, who knows? Things can change so quickly. So in the commentary box with us, we have Phil Diaz, and I guess, Phil, last year you were in this race, you started sort of mid-pack. What's the opening lap like um, for a driver when you're starting in the middle of the field? Well, my opening lap ended basically at turn one. I actually uh, got caught in a wreck, and I had so much damage, I actually went a lap down right on lap one. That's was pretty depressing, actually. It was some recovery to get back to second at the end of that race. So I guess it's it's pretty stressful trying to just trying to get yourself into a gap and not crashing. And unfortunately, you were unable to do that. Yeah, when you have cars left and right of you, only you know half a car length apart, you really have nowhere to go. There's if there's a wreck in front, you're just along for the ride. Yeah, always uh, always talk about the LFS lag as well, the network uh, uh, lag that we have in this game, the, the sort of jittery cars, which doesn't help when you're driving at uh, 180 miles an hour around the corner with guys sliding. It, it's just, it's pretty difficult to react. Because oh, Schultz, sure Schultz and Gassunas make contact! Can't we How did they save that? Somehow, somehow staying alive. I think we saw that. I think we saw that on the, um, on the broadcast. Yes, we did. Oh, Schultz and Gassi Unis making contact going through the king. All of them try to go four wide, and that will never work if they want to do it like that. And somehow Gassi Unis holding on to that, not spinning it out, and surviving. Oh, Schultz! Schultz at the moment, um, a bit of questionable driving here. He, he's, he seems to be struggling a bit with the um, 
with the nature of the actual car and he seems to just be struggling on keeping it all together and right I don't know if it's the pressure of a big race he's performed quite well in the um, practice races and qualifying that we've had up to now so I don't know if well, as just you can getting see, the Patrick his tires yeah his tires are absolutely on fire at the moment so he's gonna have a tough time for the next 20 laps Well, you said that, um, Nolan, but absolutely everybody's tyres are absolutely on fire um, here today. And, um, R2s are, in fact, mandatory here in the Kyoto 500. Nolan, how did you have to manage those throughout your race? Well, last year, I mean, we uh, we had spent quite a bit of time on the race setup, a little bit weak in qualifying, and we never really had this issue. And you're right, I'm scanning through the drivers now, and all every driver on the track has red tyres. And, I mean, granted, last year, the inside of our tire was a little bit red, but uh, we just never saw nothing like this last year. For us, it was fairly easy, to be honest. Yeah, nothing, nothing. Oh, Hutchinson! Hutchinson's in the outside wall. He's going to lose multiple positions here. He just got tapped up. Yeah, yeah he's Hutchinson's away. hopefully gone. Sorry, I was just saying, yeah, he's fallen away. Not not much damage at all. He did scrape the outside wall, but he, uh, in terms of damage, he's okay. And we have our first retirement for Strecken. He was right up there at the top. And he's out of the race. He's timed out. Yes, he was. And a great shame. First time out of the day. And 500 miles here, 270 laps. I'm fairly sure we might see another one or two. Unfortunately. Yeah, he was... He uh, was having a good race up until that point as well. That's a massive shame when you just can do nothing about it out of your control. Yeah, meanwhile, Sev Hutchinson, who we saw, um, who we heard being in the wall earlier, him and Orian Tika and Dominic Engel are now all together in a th drafting three, trying to get back up to the lead uh, quadruple. Yeah, and all these guys well rehearsed with this kind of drafting technique. There have been many, many practice sessions we're building up to this race, as well as uh, people just practicing by themselves and servers and you know, whatever. So these guys know what they are doing, they know how it works. And, uh, no mistakes yet. At least no big ones, no race ending shunts as yet, which is great to see. Yeah, very true. Meanwhile, we're watching back in around the um, 17th, 18th spot where we've got four or five cars battling it out in the back and some interesting um Oh, Schultz, Schultz spinning. Schultz, yep, Schultz there. Yep, the Schultz is off. Run up to turn three is off on the left hand side. He had a spin. We were saying he was struggling and now he really has struggled and he's making his he's way slowly suffered back from the us. Suffered from a broken right oh, front shock, and he spins again. Yeah, that shock's going to kill him. He's got to come in and repair. Yep, so Patrick Schultz did seem to have a bit of trouble um, keeping that car in a straight line earlier on. and Yep, some damage done there. So not boarding well at all for the rest of Schultz's race. Yep, no caution was brought out for that one, so we're continuing green. Uh, not going into caution will obviously benefit the race because people's tyres will stay at a good temperature and everyone will stay in the rhythm. But it's bad for Schultz, he has no chance to catch up at this moment in time. Yeah, meanwhile, we're still seeing the two something awful guys with Claudius Gasunis and Zena Kagash there as well. We just had another spin. Oh, and the Raymond Blauhoff! Raymond Blauhoff is off. Heading backwards down through the final corner. Amazingly, nobody hit him, but that will be a caution. The first caution of the Kyoto 500 2010. He uh, just does a three-point turn, gets into the race, and he is second last now. Yes, he is, and he will, without any doubt, have going to have to come in for, um, for service. He's got a flat right front tyre. And his, um, all the other ones are so awfully tortured that he's never wow. going to be able, he's going to struggle to get all the way around this lap, to be honest. 
as he slides about through turn one. And Kevin Myers, who um, has taken the lead as of the yellow flag period. So Kevin Myers now picks up the safety car. Yeah, what's that? His fra fra <laughs> flat front right tyre. Would that have been caused like by a poor setup, or is that as a result of his spin? Yeah, he just spun and hit the brakes to lock up the tyres and just popped them basically. Okay, and he can, has to continue around because the uh, pit lane is closed. Although when you have uh, major damage, you can pop into the pits if you were part of a part of it. But he's chosen not to do so. Oh, there's been a major crack. Or has that? Yes. Behind the caution car. I thought I saw someone spinning. No, that was lag. Apologies for that. <laughs> it was just lag causing people to spin everywhere on my screen. As you were. Yeah, there did seem to be a bit of an uh, bit of an incident there. Everyone was running very, very low down on the track, so I don't know what actually happened. There's a few cars take to the pit lane early on here in the Kyoto 500. Oscar Hardwick, McCarran, and Steve Martin, also affectionately known as Safety Car Steve, as well as Raymond Blauhoff now in as well. Yeah, we have Dan Sager and Mike Sadel in third and fourth. They are running side by side behind the pace car, and that's to let the admin know that they want to contest who was ahead as the uh, caution came out. Yep, just in case anyone's worried, so yeah, uh, the admin team will be scrutinising that as we speak. And to be honest, um, Nolan, quite an optimistic start to this Q500. I was just about to say, we didn't, uh, it, it, it doesn't even look like the same race we ran last year. I mean, it's the same combo, obviously, but the way everybody's approaching it is just uh, much more professional than we saw last year, and it looks like all those practice races is really paying off. It uh, looks like a fun race. Because we've got 270 laps, it's a smart thing to do. It's, uh, it's, it's really good to see these guys kind of mature up a little bit this year and, and run a much cleaner race. It's better for the audience. Yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate, really, we have a caution, but uh, but it's inevitable you're going to get a caution in a race like this. You can't expect to have no cautions, but it's just going to break the flow a bit. People are going to have to get their racing heads back on in a few laps' time, heat their tyres back up and uh, get back into the rhythm. And uh, as I said at the start, cautions breed cautions. And car 31, Mike Sadel, has been given that third position. He was ahead as the safety car came on the circuit. Yep, and speaking of safety car, we can take a look now for the first time. The official Kyoto 500 pace car, the XR Rad, driven by Timo Hinion today. And it's a very nice motor, isn't it? Yeah, that's, a good, that's probably the best looking pace car that this race has used, or any NDR event actually. I really like that. Yeah, good, good job on whoever painted that one up. Last year, the, the XRR safety car was contesting the race win, having competed so many laps, but uh, this year, hopefully, won't be quite the same, as he pulls off to the left-hand side. A more difficult manoeuvre than it would appear. I tried that a few times last year, spun a few times, trying to pull off to the left during the practice sessions, but uh, Timo Hines mastered the art and uh, reverses back into his slot as we are ready to go racing in a few corners' time. Yes, he has, and Kevin Myers, Kevin Myers will lead the way. And as you'll see um, from Kevin's car on the right-hand side, just entering turn three, there's a stack of cones, and he can gun that throttle pedal any time after that, and it will go green. No overtaking before the start-finish line. So all of these drivers have really got to keep their wits about them as we restart the race, as he passes the cones now. So he can go whenever he wants. He's dropping the speed down quite questionably. Should really be yeah. holding the pace speed, but he hasn't done that. And now he brings it up very slowly, and now he guns it. So good restart from Kevin Myers there. Very good restart, but questionable of its legality. Yeah, well, 
I don't know about the legality, but just it, there's no there's no reason to do that in a in an oval race because you're inevitably going to be caught back up. So there's no reason to be so far ahead. And then we, um, Scar's sponsor eight has got a warning for lagging back. That's Sutton. He was uh, too slow on the restart. It would say, but yeah, Myers. I don't see a reason for him doing that. Being ahead at this point, there's there's really not any advantage for him there. So. If it was, if this were a, a so-called road race, a race on a a, court, a circuit with, you know, right and left handers and whatever, that would make more sense because drafting isn't such an important part of the race. But here, no, nope, I can't really, can't really see why he's done that. Uh, I see his impatience from the people behind him. Actually, they're gunning at, waiting to jump the start, and he was just waiting to go on his time. Leader does set the pace. Yeah, that it's is certainly true. Certainly bunched the field up. Yeah, the field was trying to sort of trying to get past him, but Myers is now obviously uh, being passed now, so he is now fourth, but he'll stay in this lead group. Yes, he will. And Kevin Myers seemingly dropping quite quite a way back, all the way at the back. Don't forget the drafting will bring him all over this lead group now as he comes down the inside. And oh, that's very tight. Being Mike Sadel squeezing as far as he can. And just managing not to cause an incident there, but as we run now, oh, Antigua as well going to the outside of Kevin Myers and really not helping his race. Yeah, Mike, good to see Mike so he backed out of it there when he saw there were two cars on his inside, obviously using discretion uh, to not cause the big accident, which is uh, good to see. Good to see some discretion, something that we obviously we've we've lacked. Uh, in the previous runnings of this race, but yeah, definitely some good driving. Yep, and while we do have that lead group, we'll take a step back now to look at the absolutely massive trailing group with Zeneca Gash at the head at the moment. Yep, Stenica Gash uh, at the, well, was at the head of that group, now Lamoth, Nathan Lamoth is there. Uh, a number of other cars behind, Young, Kasunas, Mellinger, Chevy, they're all there. And just actually uh, a little way behind these two now. Kagash has uh, just broken away with uh, Nathan Lamoth. Yep, and to be honest, oh, and uh, Travis Mellinger has really, really spoiled that draft there <laughs> and um, just going a bit too high through turn two and he's lost the draft of his teammate, he'll get it back, he's been saved by Claudius Gassiun is also going too high through turn three but yeah, Travis Mailing are being a bit, imp a bit, what's the word, careless and nearly ruining a green flag run for himself here Risky, just doing the standard three car drafting. Whoa! Seb Hutchinson, Seb. you cheeky monkey! Very, very close going down the inside of yet um Tomla going through the kink. And that had my heart severely racing there, but that meant that has meant that they've caught the group with Kevin Myers, Dan uh, Fra Fraser and Sanger in it, so that gamble yeah. really did pay off for Hutchinson, but my life! <laughs> that was it's very scary. Than one lap. Yeah, he's catapulted himself right up into the front four. Uh, he was up there earlier, but he did have that scrape at the wall at the last corner, if you remember. Didn't, didn't get any damage from that, so he's uh, running as if nothing had happened. That's the uh, red and green car at the tail of the front uh, group. Yes, it is, and the highest placed rookie 
um, up to now is that of Tom and Sebastian Hudson just about to take that um, that very nice position from him and in fact take the lead through turn one but um, yeah, a lot a very lot of rookies in this um, year's race and how do you think that will affect all the big boys who's already gone and done this um, Phil how do you think that's going to affect their race and their thinking throughout today well the thinking is going to be wrong I mean, they're going to think, you know, oh, rookies, is going to be dangerous, but uh looks like these rookies sometimes are a little bit better than we thought. So far, it's been 32 laps, and we've had two cautions, or one caution. One. It's a lot better than any other before. Oh, oh so Fraser! Whoa! Fraser! Fraser has tried! Yeah, it's all about Hutchinson. He has crashed on the outside of turn one. No one has hit him as yet. No, he's just about kept it. Uh, no one's, no one's hit him, but though, yeah, he is in the wall in the last place, and there's another caution. Caution number two. I jinxed it. I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that okay, was um, that was a very strange incident as well. Fraser Sadel and uh, Sanger all coming together, and Sebastian Hutchins, and just the unlucky, um, or from my perspective, was the unlucky, um, the unlucky one in that, just getting caught up in somebody else's mess. But I just was lucky to not get hit by anyone beautiful. else. It was an absolutely beautiful save from uh, Fraser there. I cannot believe he saved that car. I just have to say that, that was unbelievable. Yeah, getting a knock at that, that speed. Around the, around the, around that corner. Oh, and Dan Sanger! Um, with that lag, or did Dan Sanger just hit Fraser up the backside there in turn two? I don't know. I'm scared. Uh, thank I think they're all kind of mad at each other and not knowing what happened. Because they just didn't leave it any room at all. Because Mike Sadel shot down the inside last second. No one gave each other room. Ended up in a wreck. Leader of the race is Tormala, followed by Fraser and Sanger, Mike Sadel in fourth, and Kevin Myers in fifth position. As we are just part way through the second caution of the day, lap 35 of 270 in this 2010 Kyoto 500. I see that as well. I noticed that he was also putting up a little bit of smoke on that right front, so he may not have that much turn in the car. But uh, yeah, that is definitely weird on that right rear. He's got a lot more down on the outside than the inside. That that was actually about um, Fraser, and we were having a little discussion there in the background about um, about tyre wear at the moment, and it's looking like there's a lot of wear throughout the field. And Nolan, maybe you'd like to um, talk a bit more about that now, seeing we've got the opportunity in the second caution of the day. Uh, yeah, I was under the influence. We were talking about Fraser, but yeah, that's who I was talking about. Was Fraser just re really unique tyre wear here? I mean. He's pretty much in a league of his own in the tire wear department. I mean, we've got a few guys that are really burning them up, and we've got a few guys that are just about perfect. And it's it's either that or the other. You know, there's there's none of those that I'm looking at that are kind of like, eh, well, he's right in the middle. I mean, it's just burning them up are really good. And right now, I'd say Fraser has the best tire wear, but like I said, he uh, he was smoking that right front a little bit, so it's pretty obvious to me he doesn't have a lot of turn in the car. And that could be a reason for hit that very strange camber in the rear. But... Um, yeah, that's about all I've got to say about it right now. I'm just going to have to keep watching. 
right now is when we're going to see what the tires will really do on this next restart because they will start to cycle pretty heavy here. So. Kevin oh, Myers and Kevin up. Myers. Yep, third place finish of last year, and he was right up there with the big boys once again, and he has timed out of the race, and that's his race over. Oh, and it must be so painful to finish a race like that so early as Tomler unloading his tyres on the apron there. Um, okay. That is, yeah, massively unfortunate for Myers. Um, second time out of the race, second retirement of the race as well. Um, yeah, just hugely frustrating for the uh, obviously the viewers and him himself because uh, he was a big, going to be a big part of this race. Yes, he was, and I've heard little shouts in my ear from little people like Jonathan Palmer. Even though that statement's a bit debatable that the um, safety car will be in at the end of this lap. I was uh, middle, mid, mid uh, drinking a bottle of water then when you said that, so nearly spent <laughs> just got away with it. Yep, and there is the official confirmation that the safety car will come in this lap, so Timo Higgin now mounting that left side wall and um, doing his little thing. I don't think... I don't think he's mounting the wall, I think he's just driving near it. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Your vocabulary is a bit skewed. So Tomlin now, he's raking the speed up and he shouldn't be, he's 5-6 kilometers too fast, but he passes the cones now, now 10 kilometers too fast, through turn 3 and he's still just inkling too fast and uh, he hasn't got, he has gone, uh, that was very very, oh but he's missed the gear, and the start has been waved off there. Yeah, that's probably about right to be honest, I don't know if it was him or people behind, but everyone was just really confused about what they were supposed to be doing. And um, we had uh, Leon Solfrank, who ended up nearly driving past Sanger, uh, around the outside. And, uh, yeah, it was a, uh, quite a dodgy restart there. I'm not sure exactly why, but anyway, we're going to be going around for another another lap. Yeah, apparently that was in fact waved off because um, because Tom actually went onto the throttle and then came back off it and then gunned it again which isn't allowed in the rules no it's dangerous it's dangerous cause yeah, yeah he's still he's still creeping the speed up he's still creeping the speed up as we approach the cones so i guess now, this this might, what might, what might be what you call a rookie mistake who knows he, maybe he just hasn't quite got safety car starts down maybe he's not done a safety car start from the lead before but he guns it now That was much better, even though he's a little too fast to begin with, but it was a lot better restart. Yeah, everyone spread out nicely. It did like a fairly safe restart. That's good. Fraser takes the lead. Yeah, and also I think um, Tomla has in fact timed that to absolute perfection, because now all he has to do is use Fraser and get him and Fraser well away from this pack, so long as um, Mike Sadel and Dan Sanger don't um, get anywhere, but they he really wants in the lead to avoid big packs forming in the first few laps of a restart but can he um, can he stop that from happening? No, because Dan Sanger and Mike Sadler are now right up their chuff. Mike Sadler yeah. actually lost that draft. Yeah, it's all about Sanger now. Just, uh, Sadler was just a little bit too slow and was unable to catch up with Sanger. But he'll uh, try his best. He's a, bit, he's a little bit by himself to be honest. And he will be uh, caught
Oh, and Tom are there, and um, sorry, Dan Sanger and Fraser there, running very high through turn one, making contact with each other, and that's led Tom. Uh, they're trying to drop him, but they're not doing it very well at all. And now Dan Sanger, oh no, he's still got the draft. That was me getting worried over absolutely nothing. They let the pack catch know. up a little bit, but already they've pulled it back out a little bit, basically what it was before that happened. So they've got some extreme pace up front. Oh, and Sutton hits the wall a little bit there. He may lose the draft here. Doesn't look like he's going... Hey, he did. Yeah, he's lost it. Yeah, if that's Sutton, he's going to have to wait until the next trailing pack comes, which might and probably should be what we're looking at next, because he's cutting up back there as well with uh, Travis Mailing and Nathan Lamoth trying to hold off Limbs Champions and a Kagash, who's made an absolute... Ter absolutely terrific um, fight back up through the field has Zanek and he's now up in this whoa nearly making contact with Travis Millinger Millinger holding it on the road another scary moment here yeah Millinger just tagging onto the rear of this train now he was uh, at the front of it now he's at the rear and just passing his teammate Randy Young Oh, and that's Zanaka Gash in the wall. Zanaka Gash in the wall through turn two of all places, and he's going to be eaten up. And he's going to end up sitting on his own for a while. Oh, and McCarran also in the wall in turn three, so. Antics going on here. That's yeah, it's doing a little bit of damage on the right. Yeah, probably not enough to affect his driving, but just something to keep an eye on for him, just to make sure he doesn't slap the wall again and increase the damage he really has. Oh, and Jan Laprevot, Raymond Vlamhoff and Oscar Hardwick, as well as Sutton and um, Hutchinson also making a big group here. And Raymond Vlamhoff squeezing past uh, that is and making a midges worth of contact. Yeah, I've got ahead of the Hutchinson as well. He's uh, blasted away. <laughs> he's just suddenly got a massive speed boost. He's well ahead of the rest. And he's... Uh, Drafting uh, with someone else. Hutchinson, yeah. Yep, and that pair it's now, funny. that pair have now dropped. Oh, and there's a crash. Nathan them off. Nathan them off in turn one. Will that be? A, that is a caution. Yeah, he nearly got himself stuck on the apron there as well, but he just managed to reverse off it. He had, he was spun up the uh, the outside of turn one. Um, and he just about kept the brakes on so he didn't sort of slide down into the traffic so uh, everyone managed to avoid him. A fair amount of damage there, he'll need to pit for that. Dan Sanger is second position behind Fraser. Uh, third is Tomala and fourth, well, 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 it's JJ Wang. The perennial driver, the driver you see at every oval race there is, not always, um, not always had the luck. He's, I think, he's retired from most of the recent Kyoto um, distance races. But right now he's up in fourth. Just doesn't ever seem to have the luck. I don't know if he creates his own luck or what, but yeah, maybe he'll be able to finish this one. He's in fourth right now. Yeah, meanwhile, Patrick Schultz being a bit questionable on the rules, obviously not um, being clued up as to um, as to the likes of chat rules and um, and the rules of lucky dogs and everything. Don't forget that there are no um, nobody's getting a lap back here. You've got to earn your way to the front, which is going to be which kind of is difficult. nearly impossible. Unless you have a teammate up front like I did last year, it's it's pretty much impossible to get your lap back. Oh, oh and Patrick uh, Schultz is off. Yeah, he just yeah. ran into the back of Stanek Kagash. He's just uh, thinking about what he's going to do next. Well, that wasn't what he wanted to be doing, I don't think. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah that's, that's not going to do. Sorry, go. Ahead. So I'm just going to ask no, no, you no, in this no, 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 by all means, like lap, by all means, continue. A lap or so down um, last year, but how do, how do you cope with, with being in that position? Like, it's obviously quite depressing, and did, 
do you ever feel like this is just worth giving up, or do you just keep on plodding on anyway? Oh, lap 20. I was in my third wreck, and I was a lap down, and I wanted to give up, yes. And then, uh, no one said it would be bored if I wasn't there, so I had to stay in the race just for no one. And then, uh, and then I just had to go through the pack and just hope the caution flew at the right time. And me and Nolan was drafting while he was in the lead. And uh, someone actually, a lapper, hit us and spun. And when that happened, the caution came out and I was in front of Nolan, so I got my lap back. Yes, I remember that. That was, uh, that was one of the many controversial incidents in that race where there was a bit of a, a, bit of a rivalry going on between Nolan Scott and some of the Fragmaster drivers. <laughs> An argument that... Yeah, a, li a, a little bit, to say the least, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it was really probably one of the most controversial bits of Memphis Speed I've seen in a, in a while. Because that, that, um, that feud between, uh, especially Fragmasters and Jonathan Palmer, that went on for quite a while. Um, there were uh, allegations of all sorts flying around last year. It was... Uh, well, for those who like a bit of drama, it was a absolutely brilliant, but it really was um, pr a pretty low moment for this race. But this year, to come back, it's all looking pretty good right now. We're in our third caution, lap 47. Fraser is the leader. Yes, he is, and obviously um, these three being veterans of this um, this event, and I've never been here before, and I have no clue what anybody's talking about, so I'll just... Um, Describe the fact that the safety car is now in the uh, pit lane with Timo Hinn's excellent I know I'll stop on the grass technique. And as Fraser comes around turn one, we will uh, <laughs> we will await the green flag. And the safety car has been redeployed here. Oh! The restart was about to happen. Dan Sanger just drove past Fraser, but they're going to have to go around for another lap. It looked like Fraser yeah. jumped the gun a little bit early there, so I think he just threw the caution. Yeah, Fraser up to 200 kilometers an hour, coming out at turn two, and he, he then went from third gear flat out down straight to first gear, with hardly any slowdown, so he absolutely destroyed his motor as Patrick Schultz decides enough is enough and retires from the race. Um, obviously no hope he felt to get back up in the uh, front of the pack, so yeah, Patrick Schultz is our third retirement. Joining Kevin Myers and Verstrecken in the, um, I don't know, for an, for an early, early end of the race, early trip to the bar. So the start was waved off, and we're going to try again. General warning, Chris Ford here. He said, spatial awareness is key on ovals. Don't dive on the inside and always look. Yeah, well, bit of oopsie daisy. Mike say we'll just... Uh, yeah, really, oh. really, really questionable start from Fraser right there. That was very, very tough to guesstimate in Sanger's position, so that was that might need to be nipped in the bud eventually. Yeah, but this, this, this has happened a few times thus far, and um... So, yeah, one of the uh, things in this race, obviously, dangerous driving isn't the issue this year. This year it's restarts and how to do them, it would seem, because, um, yeah, we had a few uh, restarts and waved off restarts this time around, and you just can't take risks on a restart because, as a, you know, it's always the way. LFS lag, people hop around all over the place, they appear in different positions, and it's very hard to react in time because, you know, if your ping's a little bit above 100 milliseconds, you're starting to, um, you know, it's pretty hard to tell what's going to happen. You can't react soon enough, so you really need to be as predictable as you possibly can. Yes, you might want to try and get an advantage, but really. The safety of other races should be the priority, as it is in real life. That's the safety well, of, the, of other races, though. More the safety of you. If you 
end up making contact with somebody, then you're going off as well, aren't you? But a very strange restart from Fraser. The, the same reason that the last w start was waved off, the last restart, before that, from um, Toma then, because he, he, he got on the throttle and then came straight back off it. So, you know, very controversial from Fraser. I don't know what the admin team will do to that, but yeah, it was... Uh, well, the, I was watching Fraser from the onboard there, and he was in fifth gear, just on off, on off, on off, and then he just instantly downshifted to fourth, blipped the throttle once, which was really, you know, it, it would freak Sanger out. And uh, as soon as Sanger hit him in the rear, he just gunned it, and he was gone. But yeah, compromising the safety of the race not not always not always a wise thing to do. It's a, it's a simple restart too. You've got a single line of cars you just get it and go and that's how you get the advantage when you're doing that you're almost setting yourself up for failure and setting the field up for failure as well yep and meanwhile Leanne Solfrank our, um, our first female driver here in the Kyoto 500 who won on the oval yesterday in the smaller um, FOX car um, the little um, oh she makes contact with um, Tormula there but she led the f her first lap and the first female to lead a lap in the Kyoto 500, so good on her. Yeah, she. Uh, oh, but she hit the wall. The, yeah, just hit the wall there. But she was in a 250 as well. Didn't finish quite as well, but she was. Uh, she is making a name for herself for sure, and uh, we'll see plenty more from her as the race continues. Maybe she'll spring a surprise or two in, in her epic, in her epic racing car. Pretty sure yeah, Dan Sanger around. and Mike Settle just got together. But Leanne's also been running an Apex Cup, and she's actually done quite well, so. Yep, up in the lead now, JJ Wang. From Hawaii, at the moment. Wang, a highly experienced driver in these uh, these races, he's always always been there or thereabouts. And as I said earlier, in the, many of the over races that have been run in LFS in various series, including the Kyoto 500s and 250s, and he's up in the lead now. The um, statistics dictate that you know he won't finish in this position because he just doesn't have the luck. But who knows? Maybe things will be different this year. Uh, j just coming Isn't from the uh, standpoint yeah. of running in the 250 and the 500 last year, Wang has come a long way. He looks like a completely different driver. He's improved quite a bit. Yeah, well, meanwhile, there's an absolutely massive trailing group here. Four, five wide coming into turn three. And contact between Sutton and Young. Young in the wall. Yeah, he's got back on. He's uh, back in lane three and back in lane four now, but he's going to lose a number of positions. He's going to be down like 18th position by the time this is done. In fact, he's 15th, but he's got another trail of cars coming past him. Leon Solfrank sets fastest lap. And he's down yep, to 19th, she... Young. Sorry, I'm just going through various different topics within half a second. Continue. You know what's crazy about this race is this is actually the cleanest race so far, but it's also the most action-packed. As I say that, there's almost a big, gigantic wreck for the lead here. Yeah, this lead battle is looking pretty fraught. It's just about, I mean, the contact is happening, but it's just not as terminal as it was previously. Um, nothing about LFS has changed, as I said, so it's just the drivers and their control. Oh my goodness me! Tamala just cut in front of Mike Sable there. I really thought there was going to be a massive collision there, but again, they've uh, kept on going. And this lead five are miles ahead of everyone else. Absolutely miles away. The next car down the road is Kasunas with Sutton and Fraser hot on his, he uh, hot on his heels. The gap is four seconds, or in fact five seconds, from the leaders to um, the fifth... Sixth place battle.
Yeah, meanwhile, there's an absolutely massive gaggle yet again then. Back, back. In the turn, it's going to catch you! Oh. And there's a big crash! Big crash here! Yeah. That's a big one. Kagash was hit, unfortunately. He spun, there was no way anyone could avoid him. And I think Hardwick ended up hitting him, unfortunately. Um, yeah, Kasunas and Kagash had that collision. And there was nothing anyone could do. And that is um, yeah. an example of the big one, I think. And caution is out. The fifth or fourth caution? I lost count. Fourth. Fourth. Fourth caution. That's but but a, a very, very um, good save there from Gassi Younis. He did a full 360 and got back on the road in 14th place now. 12th place, pardon me. So a very good recovery for Gassi Younis. Um, meanwhile, Oscar Hartley just got caught up in that, I think, as well as uh, Steve Martin. But a very, um, yeah. a very low attrition rate in that one crash, which looked like it was going to be a really big one. Yeah, it wasn't nearly as big as it could have been, so again, kudos to the drivers. Um, one of the things that I think Martin Brundle says when you're, when you're involved, when you see a crash happening ahead of you, you, uh, you aim for where the car is now, because by the time you get there, the car won't be there anymore, so you'll just drive straight past it. But in that case, there was just no time to react for anyone, and it was a, a, a multi-car collision. Yeah, meanwhile, into the pits comes Fraser Antigua, um, so that's an Young, Kagash, Hardwick Donnellyk and Martin. With Dan Sanger Eight, having the lead at the end as well. Looks like Fraser just came in for fuel. He'll be the first one out. Looks like everyone but Fraser took tires there, and I think uh, the longer you can stay on a set of tires, the better your luck's going to be, because they're just going to stay that much better on the long run, so this should pay off for Fraser. He does have the best tire wear of anybody in the race, in my personal opinion, but uh, we'll just have to watch. Yeah, it's, obviously, yeah, Frank Masters, the very experienced in the oval scene, and uh, they have worked their setups over a number of years to try and get them to as last, last as long as possible. It's always something you will notice about them. Their setups are sublime when it comes to looking after the tyres. And uh, yeah, he's kept his boots on and we'll see how long they last. Probably the whole race, and as long as he doesn't have any uh, kind of spins or incidents. Well, Don and Leak actually goes a lap down. certainly don't see uh, Fraser's tires not holding out to the end unless we just have some epically long green flag runs here. Uh, one thing I will say is, as we talked about earlier with him, the outside of the tire is wearing more on the rear. Well, it's starting to become apparent that it's doing that on the front a little bit as well. It might come back to bite him, it might not. I'm going to pay attention to that as the, as the race goes on, but uh, he should possibly be able to stretch these tires out to the end. Yeah, that's pretty interesting, actually. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that in an oval car to, to, to burn the outside. You know, I mean, the heat isn't out on the outside of the tire, but the wear seems to all be leaning towards the outside. It's kind of like to have a look at that setup. Yeah, there is a tiny bit of damage on the right front, um, just pushing it in slightly, but I don't think that's enough to justify the wear. Sudden to the pit lane. Yeah, you may be right there. I do see that now, and I figured when he would come in the pit that that would be the reason that he did come in was uh, to repair damage, but he did take fuel only, so apparently he's not too concerned with it. And uh, I wouldn't be too, too concerned either, but eh, 200 laps to go. We'll see. Yeah, I think... Lastly, there were some uh, some close calls with the fuel. People were trying to get a, well, uh, as little, obviously you try and get as little fuel as possible. Um, but I think there were some times where drivers were kind of desperate for a caution because they didn't quite have enough fuel to make it to the end. Um, because 
this it was obviously hard to take you on a bit too much fuel uh, because you don't, you don't know how many cautions there are going to be and judging by this race there's going to be a lot less cautions than normal and that could change people's strategies if, if they're going to be using last year's race as an example where a lot of the laps were under caution at um, less than half race speed well i know my and phil's strategy last season was to start full um, basically run we would calculate the distance that we had to have fuel to get to the end which would be a hundred percent wherever that may be I can't remember the numbers but basically once you get to that point you just fuel a hundred and don't touch it try to subtract the difference if you get there but early on I mean if we have a super green flag a super long green flag run right here I don't think enough guys have come in to take fuel that it could definitely be a big problem yep well Dan Sang actually in a fuel saving mode here, um, running around, he is the leader, and the safety car is now in, so he will um, get to um, take the green in just a few seconds as he approaches the cones on the outside. When's he going to gun it? That's the question. It's the question we've all been talking about here in the commentary box. Still holding Sith gear, so... I think everyone's learned now, because they, they know they're not driving too fast into the battle. I spoke too soon, they were bumped into each other. Oh, and a very, um, yeah, <laughs> the green flag flies, and a uh, rather strange um, restart for Dan Sanger there, gunning it in sixth, and then sticking the clutch in, sticking it down in the second, and then going again, so he lost a bit of speed there, um, take, lost the um, first two positions to Sable and JJ Wang. I would say, yeah, uh, people uh, on that restart, they appear to have sort of learned more about the way the restarts are being done in this race and then they weren't quite as impatient as previously you didn't see other cars accidentally overtaking there were a couple of nose to tail uh, bumps but nothing particularly major as Propo gets a penalty he had an incident under safety car that could have been the thing we would I thought I saw earlier yeah and but also a drive through penalty through. yeah I'm guessing that'll be for his part in the incident involving Stenic Kagash. Yes, it was. Yeah. And he will have to take that drive through. They'll both have to take that drive through under race conditions that you can't take it during a caution. This is actually going to turn out. Oh, and they're both coming now. They'll be together. Yeah, that's that's great news for both of them as they're coming in together. So hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully, but they should be able to get together and save some time. Well, yes, but um, Pirobo per there actually did run off the apron there slightly on the in coming into the pit lane. And Gasiunas cutting the pit lane, cutting the pit lane, cutting the pit lane. That'll be another drive through penalty for him, no doubt. Yeah, you can't. Well, that, I think that was another sticking point last year to do with uh, driving over pit boxes. There were some cases, I can't remember exactly what the cases were, but there were cases of people doing that. And uh, some of the drivers weren't so happy when it occurred, but and doesn't look like Casillas has particularly uh, let Propo catch his draft either. But I guess that's because Casillas knows he'll have to come in for a drive-through, possibly. I mean, he should know. If he well, do that. if if he if he, he should know, then why would he do it in the first place? It's fair point. Well, maybe he's used to doing it in public racing, and they just realised, oh, whoops, forgot. That's an important rule. Whoops, Casey. I personally don't see a drive-thru being administered there just simply because uh, the core racing car was right next to him at the moment and he you know, he really wasn't right up against the wall, but we'll find out here shortly, that's for sure. They better get together here pretty soon though because the leaders are coming quick. Oh, and Labrador on the apron there on turn one. They're losing masses of time there. And a bit of a rookie mistake game, and as Jan Lapovot is one of the more experienced drivers here in the um, in this race. Uh, so there we go. Yeah. Yeah. 
I was wrong. Wilco was right. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. You win the bet. You win the bet. <laughs> And also, Piropo just just caught up with Gasinas at that point um, and drafted past him. Um, they have been quite far apart for the last couple of laps, and finally they came together. But it's all a bit too late now because Gasinas is coming in for that drive-through, and Piropo is going to have to hope for another caution before the leaders catch him. Otherwise, he's pretty much out of this race. In terms of having a chance to win, that is. I mean, he'll still be in the race, but yeah, you see my point. Yes, we do all see your point, Paso. And looking through the field now as well, throughout the whole field, everybody is in pairs now. It's like one pair following another pair, following another pair as our great Michael Baskin, Lord God, times out of the server. But, yeah, it's just one pair, one pair, one pair, one pair, one pair, one pair, one pair. It's like kids at a school dance. Yeah, it's like kids at a school dance. That's my simile of the day. It's a shame that we don't have Thilo today, isn't it? Yeah, where is Thilo No today? potato. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's something to do with his graduation. Anyway. Yep, well, the legendary commentator not here this time around. Hopefully we'll see him again soon. Um, yeah, but as he said, everyone is in pairs right now. Uh, just breaking up the race a little bit. Yeah, meanwhile... Yeah, meanwhile, Gatsuyun is being given a bit of a warning there by Race Administrator Jonathan Palmer over around Ventrilo. And you lot can't hear, but we can, because we're mint. And um, he was warned that if he didn't come in this lap to serve his drive through penalty again, then he would be given a stop goal for it. And he has come in, and he is serving it as we speak. I can't hear the admins, so I'm not mint. Only you are. You're special. Congratulations. Yeah. Yes, I'm a special. So, as soon as comes out of the pits, he's now a lap down. Uh, without any kind of a chance of success in this race, it would seem. It would be quite unlikely for him to get back up to the front. With Mike Sadel and Dan Sanger continue to draft each other further into the lead ahead of uh, JJ Wang and Tormala. Now, as the, as the field is split so um, so evenly, uh, two by two by two, uh, it's unlikely we'd see any kind of a, a big crash, which is good because uh, you know it's pretty easy to draft two by two. You know what's going to happen, and it's pretty predictable. It's just a case of when a particular pair catches up with another pair is when you start getting the four-way drafting that gets a little bit more complicated. Yeah, well, we do have a three-way going on as we speak. Nathan Lamar, Seb Hutchinson trying to fight his way through the field there. Um, as well as Tommy Engel, but it looks like Tommy Engel's going to get lost off this now as the moth, the moth comes very tight there, and they do lose Engel, I think. Yeah, they won't lose him if uh, the moth keeps driving off the track. But uh, yeah, that's actually isn't uh, Hutchin involved in that major crash at Turn One earlier in the race. He's still up there in eleventh position. Yep, and, and meanwhile. Um, down in the back, I'm hearing, I'm hearing from a reliable source, that I don't know whether it's reliable or not, that Elliot Southerton, in the 26 car, tootling around on his own in the back, seems to, um, I have been told, that he has engine damage, so that's a big gutting, after only 78 laps of this race, to, um, to have en engine damage so soon, isn't it? Yeah, do you want to try and go on board with them, see if we can hear that? No, because it doesn't work. Unfortunate. Okay, I'll have a listen then. Hang on. 
Um, look at that, it's um, Elliot Sutherton, a second slower than Jan Lappenrod, who's also running around on his own. So, a visible effect here on Elliot. I'm just having a little listen, I turned the window off in LFS and uh, yeah, it would appear there's a very slight crackly popcorn noise coming from his engine. Speaking of more bad news, the lone core racing driver Piropo is about to get uh, lapped here. It's not going to take long at all, he's just going to try to hold on to the draft, I guess, and try to get his lap back, but he will be caught in at least the next lap, maybe two. It should be yeah, this lap. Uh, it is unfortunate, because him and Gasunas were drafted together, but then Gasunas got that second drive-through penalty, um, meaning Kuropo is now by himself, with no teammates to back him up, unfortunately. You, should, you guys should get out there, Scott, Phil, you should, uh, no, I'm sorry, and Phil, get out there. Scott! <laughs> Scott you know, it's a little surprising to only see one core driver in this race, but uh, in the past it's only been two, maybe three at most, so I guess it's not too surprising, but I was expecting to maybe see Neve and some of the other guys out here, some of the newer guys, but uh, yeah, there he's officially a lap down, and it looks like he's lost the draft. It's going to be real close. No, it looks like he pulled it back up, but either way, it's going to be really tough to get that lap back with Sanger and Sadel in front. Yeah, yeah. well, meanwhile... Um, back in the um, in the drafting and in the um, up in the front of the field, the Ansel Frank and Raymond Blauhoff, who've been drafting in a two, as have the rest of them, have now really caught onto the back of Tomler and Wang, and this is going to make a four-way um, battle very, very shortly. Um, Piropo is now uh, drafting away with the lead, paired Dan Sanger and Mike Seidel as well. And Lynn Shebby dropping back, he's a lap, no he's not a lap down, dropping back away to Karen and Mailinger. So it's all starting to close back up now as people just get lost off the draft and back off into a three and then they catch up to the two in front and everyone's starting to just close the gaps now. Mike Sadel leading the race along with uh, Dan Sanger. Those two are still fighting for the lead. Third place still Tamala and JJ Wang. Also up with the top two drivers, Dan Sanger and Mike Sadel, is Piropo uh, of Core Racing. He is still a lap down, but he's still maintaining uh, some kind of pace with these two. 
and uh, you never know, he could draft himself back into the lead at just the right moment. Who knows? And here comes a Thubberton's about to be lapped by the leaders. He has no chance, unfortunately, because of his engine damage. Not sure where that might have occurred. Uh, maybe when he came into the pits. That must be, must be the only place it would have happened uh, coming into the pit lane, just being a bit too aggressive on the downshifts. about lap cars it does look like Morobo has finally lost the uh, draft here so I don't think he'll be able to get his lap back on this run obviously nope it's unfortunate he wasn't able to keep the same pace as the two leaders yeah but now the main focus for us really turns on the um, the battle for around about third place and the um, in the trailing group Yeah, Frank and Blauhoff still catching, and they're going to get another. They're not going to get it. Um, a pull from Southerton, who is sensible and pulls out the way with his um, rather unhappy motor. Yeah, yeah you're not going to get much of a tow from a car that's driving, you know, a few miles an hour slow. It's going to be too risky to really try and draft up to the back of him. So, yeah, these uh, four drivers, Tormala. Uh, Wayne, Sol Frank and Blahoff, they're going to eventually, eventually become a four-way draft for third position. Uh, we're on lap 91 of 270. Well, we, we, we say it'll definitely become a four-way draft, but I don't think it will, because um, this drafting between Raymond Blahoff and Leanne Sol Frank has turned very inefficient, and it's the starting to struggle to get the pace, and Leanne Sol Frank seems to have throttle problems. Look at Leanne... Th so Frank's throttle trees. Uh, right now I'm not seeing anything other than flat to the floor. Unless it happened a moment well, ago. There was a bit of fairly weird wobble coming out of turn 3 on it. And she doesn't appear to have lost much speed, but we'll keep an eye on that one. Yes, I did hear a lift off there. I just heard a little lift off. Yeah, definitely something to keep an eye on. But look, they've caught right oh, up to the back. Just, yeah, they've got them. Yeah. So that little problem obviously not affecting uh, them at all, and it's going to be four way for the third position. And Leanne is going to take that now up the inside at turn one. And get the fastest lap in the process. <laughs> oh, nothing with that car then. <laughs> fastest <laughs> lap, bit of drafting, does your wonders. Oh, but now she's being boxed in by Toma going down the inside. A lot of them, Raymond Blaufel, nearly turning in. JJ Wingsting very high. She might have actually just lost the draft there. Yep, yeah, looking a little bit like that, but who knows, maybe one of them will just fall back a little bit further in and she'll be able to catch up again. Now, since you guys are here from the newly ish formed NX Racing, why isn't NX Racing in the uh, in the Kyoto 500? What are you guys doing? Well, if we knew it was going to be this clean. Yeah, that would have helped a lot too, that. but I uh, really enjoy using the restroom, and after last year, which was like, uh, I think, four hours of sheer torture, I'm really not too disappointed. Uh, okay, so it's all, it's all about the, the endurance factor. You just can't take it. You don't have the stamina. <laughs> oh, okay, I see how it is, Pat. I see. We'll uh, we'll, we'll see how everything turns out come in uh, MOE IGTC, and then we'll uh, know the answer to that question. Well, in that way, you have to do an hour stint, then you can go to the bathroom as much as you like. This is one big three-hour stint. You gotta you gotta train for it. Well, Pastor, that's right. You got you got you're talking minuscule numbers. I did eight and a half hours. I'm sure you remember that, Pastor, in an XFR in a row. Oh, I, I've I, I I feel your pain. I've done maybe not quite nine hours in, or eight hours in a row, but I think I did like five in a row in the 2008 16 hour race. But yeah, I I do feel for you definitely. It is a it is torture. Um, Goodness me! In the physical sense, I was just about. Yeah, and I was just about to say Magnus ran over four hours this last uh, 
this last weekend in the XRG endurance race, which to me is uh, about as long as I ever want to be in a car pushing to the absolute limit. That's a, about after four hours is when the mind starts to wander a little bit, so I couldn't imagine doing eight. Yeah, it hurts. Especially the bladder. Did you end up finishing that race, uh, Chris? <laughs> no, I needed to go to the bog, so I had to hand over to Andy O'Brien. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> but if your team finished, that's, that's <laughs> what I meant. Oh, yeah, we, we came second, as a matter of fact, so I'm quite proud of oh, that. Brilliant. But anyway. Back to the race at hand. Yeah. And Tomla seeing, seeming to catch that bump, but we've got ta somebody's timing out. No, they're not, they've survived, but... Bit of a scare there on the lag, but Tormala seems to be catching a little bump in turn three every single lap. I mean, if I was to do eight hours, I would just have to have one pit stop that was dedicated to that segment of going to the restroom, that is. <laughs> like a 28 second long fuel and tire pit stop. Oh, that was in private. Oh. Somehow we managed to get back onto the toilet. <laughs> There's a little bit of confusion here well, just uh, between private and public binds here. People not quite sure which one they're using. So sometimes you'll hear bits of conversations that you aren't supposed to be hearing. But <laughs> anyway. I think Phil's just trying to make me look bad, but we'll see. I'm not trying to you get you I try to make everyone look bad. I try to make yeah. everyone look bad. I'm going to bring yeah, up anyway. something just a little bit off topic in this race right here. I've been watching Sutton and Fraser of Fragmasters for quite a while. They're running 19th and 20th. And they are, they're not running incredibly far off the pace, but they are running 37 twos, 37 threes all the time. And we know they're capable of running good 36s. I mean, mid 36s is easy in two cars. And I'm really, I've been watching this, and I just think they're doing this to conserve their tires. And if this pays off and they can stay out in front of the leaders, which the leaders are kind of creeping up, I think if they really want to get down to the nitty-gritty, they can Im improve that pace quite a bit. But, I mean, tire-wise, this could be a big move in this race for that team. And this, this could pay out in dividends. Fraser actually has uh, suspension damage, and that's why his right front, the outside of the tire is heating more. Oh yeah, and I'm watching his teammate, which obviously should be around the same set. He's not having that issue, and that's another reason that makes me think that they might just be conserving equipment here, just trying to save Fraser's right front. But you know, either way, even if it's not an issue, Sutton is going to—it's—it's it's going to help Sutton too in the long run. So just have to see if they can maintain the, uh, or they can stay on the lead lap. Yeah, I mean, if they're driving conservative race, I guess they're expecting maybe another caution or, f uh, or two. We've gone a long time. This, uh, this green flag run has been uh, a very long one. Uh, but if th I guess they're expecting another caution. They're just going to save their tyres, save their fuel, just, just enough to uh, maybe get back into it near the end of the race. Which is, I mean, the end of the race is the important bit. <laughs> Everything else is just the sideshow. The, the final lap is the one where you have to be leading. And uh, maybe that's what they're thinking about now. Yeah, I'm just uh, while, there is an um, there is a three weird draft going on here, <laughs> a lot of squeezing and a lot of um, a lot of little bits of pushy pushy racing here going on between Lamotte, Hutchinson, and Mailinger. They really don't even as Hutchinson turns in on Mailinger. Oh, this is getting worrying. Lamotte running a bit high as well. Just gonna say, Mailinger actually has the best tires out of everyone in the top Ooh. ten or so. While Nathan Lamont looks like he hasn't finished tires, and he's in that same pack. Yeah, I, d I think Mellinger has, he's made a pit stop for tires, I, w I think, at some point during this race, which could explain why his tires are in the condition they're in. No, out of these three, ha Mellinger is the only one that hasn't pitted. Oh, what do you know? Well, <laughs> shut me up then. Very good, very good <laughs> indeed from Mellinger. Well, back to Phil's point about Lamoth there having rough tires. I mean, I just glanced at it, and I mean, that is like getting close to the limit where you'd almost have to be concerned a little bit about the tire popping in the next 20, 30 laps. I mean, that, that could be bad news if he doesn't get a caution here soon. Yeah, I mean, he's running in ninth position at the moment. Just 
got away from Travis Millinger and Seb Hutchinson for a little while as they all come into turn three now. Oscar Hardwick and Antigua as well catching the group. So this this group could just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and then a lot smaller as everybody takes each other out. Not like I'm tempting fate or anything. We we seem to tempt fate all the time. Once this race already Phil um, Phil caused a crash by saying what he said uh, in the previous race. Thilo Frankenberg caused about 80 crashes by talking. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, the leaders thinking they're gonna run away with the win. That was Thilo, and then suddenly they crash. Remember that? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. I've got my own. My, my own uh, my own misdemeanor in 2008 when I caused the leaders to take each other out as well. So, you know, commentators have to be careful. We have a big responsibility. We, we've got to try not to cause accidents with what we say. I believe me and Phil were running in uh, third and fourth at that present time. So, you know, just saying, if you ever see us running third and fourth, feel free to talk about the leaders. Oh, man, Sutton down on the apron. I've been watching them again. He just lost a lot of time. The leaders are right on their tail now. If they go a lap down, this is going to be just, it's going to crush their race. Yes, it is. 106 laps gone of 270. So we're not that far away from the halfway stage, as a matter of fact. And meanwhile, back with what we were watching just a little bit earlier. Um, Lamoff has, in fact, been caught up again by Mehlinger and Hutchinson. Oh, Hutchinson very high! I was scared he was going to do another stupid, stupidish sort of move like he did earlier on and lost a draft. Oh, but he makes contact with Michael Mehlinger! Seems a bit too about right now. half a corner on first and second. I don't think they can. I don't think they can pull that gap out. This this could be trouble. Yeah, because they're going to be desperately trying not to go a lap down, but it's surely inevitable now. It's just, uh, it's getting, it's getting too close. I figured they were conserving, but it just doesn't look like they've turned on any heat here, so. It doesn't look, they're gonna, look, look like they're going to be able to do it. Yeah, they're still and dancing and prancing about up on the top line. But this might also be an opportunity for Dan Sanger to latch on to the, these Fragmasters guys, hope that it'll stay green for the rest of the race, and just have a nice easy ride to the um, to the finish line. Not regarding pit stops, which I totally forgot about, however. Yeah, you, you don't really want to hang on to those Fragmasters guys because they're not they're not quick enough. To, uh, their current pace is not quick enough and they, will be en they would eventually be caught and everyone would start getting in trouble so I think Dan Sanger just needs to work with Mike Sadel and just uh, keep on keep on building that lead I think I mean look at that they've already broken away from the two of them which uh, from Fragmasters guys is just I just can't believe it I'm, I'm seeing what I'm seeing it almost looks like maybe one of them might have engine damage I don't know it's hard to say Yeah, people, no one's yet to invent some kind of uh, application that measures engine da air, engine damage, but I guess that's because it's not an in-sim output kind of a thing. But I'm sure someone clever enough would be able to make an app to work out... Ooh! <laughs> Sutton just did the big old bump draft there on uh, Fraser, but yeah, as I was saying, someone should make an app to work out how damaged someone's engine is. Well, I'd love to have that. Yep, um, Gus Leggett, if you're listening, you know what to do. That's an endurance racer's delight. Yeah, I have to, when I've been doing endurance races, you often, you often do get paranoid. You just hear, because sometimes the wind noise that LFS produces does sound a bit like the popping popcorn sound from uh, from your engine when it's damaged. And it's always just nice to have a bit of knowledge that you haven't actually screwed up the race for everyone in your team. Yeah, maybe it does have something to do with me being paranoid, because I, I literally tell guys to watch remote, watch the speeds. If you ever see me falling like a mile an hour off, tell me. You know, just stuff like that, because it, 
it scares me to death when I'm driving a car sometimes that, uh, you know, it's just one mistake, you know, one extra downshift or something, and your whole race is done. I mean, it's not like you spin out and you're like, well, okay, we're back in the race. I mean, it's over. Unless you disconnect and reconnect, whatever you got to do, but that's, that's going to kill your race too, so. Yeah, it's one of the most frustrating things that can happen, but that's one of the few things in LFS uh, where it really is your own fault. Uh, if you damage an engine, it really is no one else's fault other than your own, which is, I guess it's somewhat comforting that you know LFS isn't, isn't just going to throw a random a curveball at you, damaging your engine. Yeah, Whereas timing well, out is well, better. We had a draft there, but it seems to have washed up again and we're back to three. Oh no, it's looking for four! Wow! Oh, Mike Sale! We just thought for a moment that Mike Sale might have lost the draft of Dan Sanger coming onto the front stretch, but it turned out he was just oh, about to oh, around in three and four. Yeah, Hutchinson got a little squirrely, got into Lamote. They both spun. Lamote didn't. Yeah, well, Lamote's fine. Hutchinson might have some damage now. He's good too. Can't believe it. Oh, yeah, his tyres are absolutely shot. He's going to have to pit to change them or just drive really slowly for a while. Which is what a caution will do, obviously. Yeah, his race is... I mean, he's had an adventure already, this race. He's had several uh, close calls and two crashes now, so... His race has uh, gone from bad to worse, it would seem. As he rejoins in 21st position and a lap down. And now the field is very mixed up uh, as this caution car comes out. Yes, it does. Meanwhile, in the, um, I've got a little speed summary um, for you. Um, in the first 100 laps of today's race, 149.8982, if that's not specific enough for you, then go away. Miles per hour is the um, average speed, which is the second fastest 500 up to now, which is just a midgy slower than 2009. Um, really? Yep. Yeah. The second 50 was ran at an average of 179.9475 miles an hour, which is absolutely fantastic here. So I'm going to that again, so what's the average speed of the, speed of the race so far? The average speed of the race so far, up as of the first 100 laps, as far as I can go up to up to now, the average speed was 149.8982 miles per hour. That's the second fastest far Kyoto 500 so far, it's just a tiny little bit slower than 2009 up to now. Yeah, I think 2009 got a little bit more messy as it went on, didn't it? The first few laps we were actually quite optimistic about, and then as we got past 100 or so, it really got messy and every other lap seemed to be a safety car. Oh! Ah! Uh, Come to now. Are you okay? <laughs> 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 no, a big, um... A big concertina there through turn one. Nathan Lamoth re-rendered like, Jan Lafferbach quite hard. Then um, Zedek Kagash re-rendered Nathan Lamoth quite hard. And then Randy Young just sort of dived out the way and just sort of survived. So sorry about that little bit of excitement. I would suspect to see quite a few more pit stops here than we have been, but... It might not be within their fuel range yet. I don't know if you have the math on that, Wilco. Seems like you're pretty up to date on the statistics, but no, doesn't look like it. Yeah, Sanger comes in. Sanger's in. Soul Frank, Wang, Hutchinson, Gassy Eunice, and Perupo both missed the pit entry, but they made it into the pit lane. Yep, now this is... Oh, contact DJ Wang and Leon Soul Frank both going for the same pit box there. Millions of cars now draping the pit lane. Yeah, we have, we're having guys having a hard time finding stalls right now. Ori Antica having to queue to get into a stall.
said about Travis Merlinger having the best tires, and he actually just changed his tires. I think that was a bad call. Probably could have just took fuel yeah, and I agree. started again. Now, Sadel's got a, a little bit of a decision to make here. I mean, if they know they're good on fuel and he's not, I would take the penalty right now, come in late, lose those positions and get fuel and be safe. But um, if they can't make it, he can stay out either way. It looked like a big risk to me.